As if Alpha 3.23 wasn't big enough, we are now getting even more features in the next upcoming patch, some of which we have been waiting for since ships like the Retaliator were released. With one of these features such as modularity for the Retaliator, comes the possibility to bring this to other ships during Invictus that you might not expect. Many of the signs from the monthly progress point to ships like the Polaris, Galaxy, Perseus, and Apollo nearing completion. And if the next patch is any indication, we could very well see these ships be released very soon. In today's video, we'll go over all of the confirmed features coming to Alpha 3.23 and dive deeper into the Retaliator and its modularity and what that means for the future of modularity for other ships and how 3.23 will be the best patch yet. If you're someone who can't wait for the release of the Polaris, smash that like button and be sure to share your thoughts in the comments on what you think of the Polaris. Your engagement with the channel helps us to gauge your interest in all things Star Citizen. And don't forget to subscribe for more clear, concise, and up-to-date content on Star Citizen and Sim Gear reviews. The new character creator is something that many are excited for that brings much more customization for players by adding new faces, hair, beards, and a more robust way to sculpt your character the way that you want. It also adds a way to save our character so that we have a way to easily recreate them between server wipes and also share custom designs with others, similar to how Mass Effect 3 had a code for each unique face. Fauna is coming as well, and with it, 3.23 will add the Maroc, a passive bird-like creature, and the Copion, a pack animal that is similar to a hyena, and each of them has implications of them being used for crafting in the future. There also will be new missions that will require players to hunt these two creatures, and even retrieve items of value from them. The only other animal that would be nice to see soon following 3.23 would be the Space Cow, but no official news has been given as to when they would be added. Looting is getting a massive improvement with the new UI in 3.23 and will greatly allow for faster looting and a more cohesive experience, rather than the disjointed method of looting we have now. According to Evocati testers and the Wave 1 testers, as of now, it's currently working, but it does need some work and it is a little bit blurry. At least that was my experience when hopping into 3.23 recently last night. However, I will say that it does feel extremely intuitive and easy to use regardless of the blurry text issues. Removing and equipping items will also be changed quite a bit with the new item banks being added. This new feature will make it so that you have to transfer items in and out of the item bank instead of opening up the inventory in major locations, and quickly pull loot off of fallen NPCs. I'm honestly happy about this change because it will force players to prioritize what they loot more. However, right now, we are having some major issues with the item bank and having a white screen appear, and it is pretty much unusable. Arena Commander will also add a new map, Miner's Lament to all game modes, and the new Grab Royale mode. We will also be getting the experimental engineering gameplay, similar to how Master Modes was added for players to test in 3.22. Now I messed around with the engineering gameplay in Arena Commander, and it is honestly one of the most fun experiences to be a crew on a ship and repair components and replace fuses. It makes multi-crew gameplay feel so much better. And finally, something many players have asked for, custom lobbies are also being added to Arena Commander with the ability to change maps and rules for any game mode. With the much needed update to Moby Glass being switched over from the old outdated Flash technology to CIG's building blocks, apps inside the Moby Glass will get a massive facelift and will be much more responsive and usable, giving us more information for our character, the world around us, and the missions that we accept. Unfortunately, the old Vehicle Manager app will still be a part of the Moby Glass until they give it the much needed update as well. Now the biggest thing to know about Moby Glass right now in Wave 1 is that it is super blurry and you can still read it, but it is just jarring in some regards. One of my biggest complaints is that they still have yet to add an org management app to allow us control over our organizations in-game and to have it tie into Spectrum. The Org 2.0 system has been needed and talked about for more than six years now, and is something that we desperately need. The new Maps app will also integrate the new Star Map, new Ground and Interior Map together in one system. This will greatly improve our navigation experience throughout the game by making the Star Map more intuitive and functional, and allowing players to search for locations and easily travel to and from points of interest. On a side note, there's also a lesser known update to the quantum travel, making it easier to select the correct quantum travel beacon. The new interior map will make navigating landing zones and space stations a much better experience allowing us to find specific stores and locations. 
And with a compass finally being part of the HUD as well, it makes FPS so much better than it was before. The new lens and visor system will also bring a ton of improvements by improving the overall visuals of the helmet HUD and augmented reality when you have no helmet. This will make both the HUD and AR uniform and carry over data from one to the other and fix a lot of the issues with low priority notifications overwhelming the screen by shifting them to the lower part of the screen. The visor and lens update has been another feature that I've been waiting for for some time and I'm glad to see CIG finally updating many of the old legacy systems. The interaction system and inner thought system has been some of the most painful features of the game that have been needed to be fixed for too long. It made gameplay feel a lot more cumbersome when interacting with objects in the game when a simple interaction would be a better experience. With the new player interaction system, it will finally make picking up items in the universe a better overall experience by allowing us to quickly grab items, open doors, and much more. It will also give us a secondary interaction and allow us to change what the primary and secondary interaction does. Whether you choose to equip an item, inspect an item, or place it in your hand is up to you. Persistent hangers and freight elevators are some of the most anticipated features of 3.23, and it will add automated and manual loading options for players and further provide more gameplay options for cargo hauling, allowing players to unload their ships and store it into their global inventory at the landing zone. This will make our inventory and cargo more physicalized, rather than just an item appearing before our eyes when we remove it from our inventory. This will also add persistent hangers and instancing, and landing pad elevators, giving us a location to customize and call home, preventing random players from being able to sneak on board our ships or ram our ships, and allowing ships to spawn and despawn, with the landing pad raising or lowering to stow or unstow our ships, with the ASOP terminal being located inside of our hangars. Distribution centers will also add a new and massive location for players and provide a centralized location to buy and sell items, run cargo missions, eliminate NPCs, and sneak through the facility past guards in order to steal things or assassinate a VIP. These will be amazing locations for us to explore and also for player orgs to train FPS combat in larger areas, and I'm really looking forward to these as well. And then we have EVA Tier 2, which will make 0G traversal better than ever before. And let me tell you, it is so smooth. You'll be impressed with how much better it feels and that you can finally float through space and not end up tumbling around in space because you accidentally bumped into a desk. And the animations when entering and exiting 0G is easily one of the best parts of the whole thing. Reputation in the game has long been something that many of us have wanted to have more depth. And with 3.23 adding in hostility, NPC factions will finally begin to remember your name and attack you on sight, maybe even put a bounty on your head if you begin to get on their bad side. Some of the other additions to reputation that I would like to see are special rewards for missions like armor, weapons, and ship components. Hopefully that will be coming soon to give us more reason to work on our reputation. We'll also be getting the new Blockade Runner dynamic event, which will have a station locked down and under attack by outlaws, where we'll have to run past the blockade and deliver supplies to the station. It will be nice to get more information about that event once 3.23 is live, but I think this might be a pretty fun event. We'll also be getting new cargo hauling missions where players will be paid for delivering goods from one location to another without requiring you to buy the goods in order to make money. Now one of the big features coming in under the radar is the ship AI is getting vastly improved by giving the AI different behaviors and making them more difficult. Things are going to get really spicy with this update. An AI will begin using different tactics such as strafing, jousting, flying information, and much more. This will begin making combat feel better than ever before, and the comparison is unlike anything we've ever had before. And this will all tie into master modes. Now, we also know that Master Modes is coming, and as far as the ships go, all of them are affected. I have not had much time to play with Master Modes in 3.23, but so far from just the brief interactions that I've had, it is feeling incredibly better than ever. And there are a lot of improvements that we did not have in Arena Commander. So I will be looking forward to getting my hands on a Gladius and many others to see how they fly. Now this was a really unexpected update to get, and one of my highly anticipated parts of 
The Retaliator is finally getting its gold pass and is bringing the beginning of modularity. This will add the cargo module and the torpedo module and allow you to switch out the front and rear bays. We haven't heard much about modularity until just recently, which makes me wonder what else might be added with modularity. Could we finally get our hands on the Galaxy and the Apollo with modularity upon release? I sure hope so. The biggest release that I expect to see coming out during Invictus, given their most recent progress, are the Zeus and the Polaris. While this may be a long shot, I think it could be possible to see these two ships in-game during Fleet Week. But if the Polaris doesn't make it in, I still expect to see the Zeus, but either way, I won't be upset. Further improving the visuals for 3.23, we'll be getting updates to volumetric clouds by making them sharper and eliminating more of the grainy look that they currently have. We'll also be getting improved lighting in the atmosphere by having shadows cast on the ground and object accurately, and the water reaction effects creating waves and splashes from different varying forces like thrusters, bullets, and vehicle damage. What I would like to see is water buoyancy, so we can have boats and even allow ships like the 890 jump to float in the water. I think it would be really cool to see one day. If that wasn't all enough, 3.23 will also add image scaling to further increase performance by adding DLSS, FSR, and TSR, which will give all players better frame rates. Vulcan will also be added which will further increase performance even more by offloading a lot of the work that the CPU has to do. I really can't imagine how much of the performance gain we might see, but the thought of it is an extremely exciting one that I think our experience will truly begin to be vastly different than what we're used to. I believe that all these features being added, the game could possibly be ported to consoles at some point. Now the caveat would be that my biggest concern for that, however, would be if it's even possible, given how many different key bindings are in the game. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And then there's the replication layer, another piece of the puzzle necessary for server meshing that will give us server recovery that will prevent us from losing all of our progress during our game sessions. Once this feature is in, it will continue to get better as CIG collects more data and refines the tech, and it will usher in the future of server meshing so that we can finally have possibly up to 800 players on one shard with each major planetary system having its own server. Alpha 3.23 is a massive update, and each of its features is important in its own way. When this patch goes live, we could see an influx of new and returning players piling in to experience the beginning of the future of Star Citizen. We will also be getting even more experimental tests with server meshing on the PTU, more ships as the months go by, and be well on our way to 4.0, which will finally give us access to jump points, as well as pyro. And with the recent leaks of Levski and the reputation of the People's Alliance and Nyx appearing out of nowhere, I might be a little crazy to think this, but I believe Nyx could be seen by the end of this year. Now, it may not necessarily be playable for us, but we will possibly see it soon. And that gets me pretty excited for the future of the game. I hope that we see a ton of new features and locations during CitizenCon later this year, but I have a feeling that it's going to be a really big event that will blow a lot of people away. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments what you think they'll announce during CitizenCon. What new features or locations do you think that they'll show off? Don't forget to join our community by subscribing to this channel, where you'll be provided clear and concise news and updates on Star Citizen, and reviews of some of the best gear and peripherals in the sim and gaming market. If you want to join the channel and support the creation of these videos, then consider becoming a member and get special perks such as loyalty badges, priority replies, and more. And if you want more information on what the best starter ship is that you should get, then you'll want to check out this video on why the Avenger Titan is simply the reigning champion. Fly safe pilots, and I will see you in the next video. Have a gout.